right. Good evening, brethren, and to those that may be watching. This was sort of a, an unexpected study, but uh, should be very edifying for the brethren and useful to those that may be watching as well. This study is more or less geared towards uh, men, young men from, say, 18 to 50. I have to include that range. What spurred this on really was uh, my observations the last little while about men that uh, don't act, but more importantly for this study, dress their age. It's very, uh, say, kind of unsettling and a bit, you know, it looks a bit foolish and silly, really, seeing guys like in their. Uh, 40s and 50s uh, dressing like teenagers wearing all sports team stuff and colorful sneakers and weird things you know years ago when I was kind of foolish and unsaved and wanted to look and act like the world and dress like the world maybe I would have thought that was normal but uh, not anymore so this study is going to cover some di different verses we're not going to go overboard with certain things either but uh, really consider and ponder these things like uh, distinction, modesty, you know, plainness. So uh, we'll start with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. And then I'll give you some examples of uh, what plain, nice clothes for a man should be. Verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Put away those colorful sneakers, those Nikes and all those other weird things. It's not right. The one verse we all know, brethren, for uh, women in particular, 1 Timothy 2.9, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which become with women professing godliness with good works. Anyways, this study though is more or less geared for men, but uh, there could be a lot said about that too. In fact, some of the women you see that they're, uh, they don't even dress basically now. And you don't have to be at the beach to notice that in public, public spaces. It's not right. And they're not ashamed. Titus 2, 2. But verse 1, But speak thou things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound of faith, and charity, and patience. The verse I was, or the the word in that verse I was gonna hone in on was uh, sober. Are you dressing sober? Or are you dressing like a fool? So the fun part of the study, brethren, some small examples. People may mock me for doing this, but uh, proper apparel for men. Said shirt, short sleeve. Great for working out. Great for exercising, walking, doing errands, being in the woods, cutting wood, whatever. 100% cotton, short sleeve, gray, non-offensive. Other men, young men, something you should invest in, a leather belt. This thing will last years. Cost me maybe 30, 40 dollars Canadian worth the money and last probably 10 years pure leather get yourself a belt pull up the slacks another article of clothing plain pa pants here in our climate it's very cool six months out of the year seven months out of the year these are uh, corduroy pants plain you can walk them work in them do whatever. Simple. Now the last little thing is going to show you, brethren, every 
every real man has his own pair of boots. These are uh, leather boots as well. Fairly comfortable. Don't wear them all the time, but great for being outdoors and uh, things like that. Work in the water, in the rain, no problem. For a basic pair of shoes, same thing. These are sort of like hiker shoes, but I wear them everywhere. Do the trick. They're not colorful and childish and silly looking. Anyways, with that being said, those are some examples. Like I said, this study is spurred on by just the ridiculous, ridiculousness I've been noticing. of grown men older than me. I'm 30. People older than me. Still dressing like they're teenagers and younger. It's not right. It's weird. Anyways, let's get into some of the meat of the study, though. That was a bit milk and some very good verses as well. Of course, you could branch off into many other subjects with those verses, but uh, in regards to the topic at hand, let's turn to uh, Genesis 3. Talk a bit about clothing again, some of the historical context and the spiritual context. A couple verses. Genesis 3, 7 through 11, it says here, And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed, sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now we're talking spiritual stuff here, and the brethren will understand. This is man's attempt to cover themselves, their nakedness, once their eyes were open from the fall, from eating the, the fruit from the tree. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid, because I was naked. I hid myself. And he said, Who has told thee that thou wast naked? Thou eaten of the tree, whereof I command that thou shouldst not eat. And of course he did. Blames Eve. Blames the woman. Quit, quit blaming men. Take ownership. Now skip down to verse 21. Unto Adam also, and this is the Lord, unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. Interesting. Turn to Matthew. Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If thou therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Talk about our understanding now. Let's get a little more context. Matthew 23. This is uh, 27 and 28. The key, though, brethren, is not to get carried away with trying to look righteous on the outside. You want God to clothe you. I'm just sharing some practical examples of walking in the world and not looking like a worldly uh, fool, you know. Someone that's uh, so into idolatry and the, the latest things and that. You don't want to do that. You want to dress plain, presentable. 23, 27 through 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so are you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. See, there's two things with the clothing. The worldly people that just look goofy and funny and the quote-unquote religious, ultra-religious spiritual people with their garments and beautiful raiment. Don't be deceived by that. I'm telling you to dress plain. You take my advice or not. It doesn't matter. I like you to. James chapter 2. Now let's get into this a little more. James chapter 2. Turn there, please. I'm going to read 
from verses 1 through 7. It says here, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. Think of this too, vile raiment could be just really beat up, dirty clothes, holes in the, the sweater, dirty pants, jeans. I confess a fault at times and I have to get better about it because who am I? You can be very careful brethren not to judge the uh, harboring evil thoughts. Anyways, uh, verse 3 here uh, continuing also poor man of vile raiment and you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing and say unto him sit thou here in a good place and say to the poor stand thou there or sit under my footstool and the gay clothing is you know bright and you know noticeable are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts hearken my beloved brethren hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him but you have despised the poor do not a rich man oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats do not they blaspheme that, are, that, that worthy name by which you are called and that they do. Thinking of uh, a certain group of uh, people that pretend or think they're Christians, they're far from it, that wear golden crucifixes with uh, this uh, Jesus thing on it. I don't know. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ, not even close. So uh, they uh, use the Lord's name as a curse word, too. They're the people in suits and ties, really fancy stuff. You know, they're, they're rich in the world, but their treasure is not in heaven. Second Corinthians 5, turn there. Read verses uh, 1 through 7. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so being that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that have wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who have also given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. One more verse to go and we'll stop. Just came to me too, just right now, that uh, the clothing too, like a lot of people, uh, I guess you could use the word they... Uh, Get their identity or identification from the clothing. That's not the point. Especially for us. My view is comfortable plain clothing is nice. You can get carried away times where you buy a lot. Which is, uh, you got to be watched about covetousness. Spending too much money. See, these are all things I need to consider too, brother. But, uh, comfortable plain clothing. Nothing to be identified. No sports team. No uh, fashion brand sticking on it. It's not necessary. Do I get a couple coats with different little things? Sure. But uh, for me it's comfortable, plain clothing. Conservative. It's fine. Finish with uh, Revelation 3, 5. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Amen. That's the goal. And of course, to get that right now, you must be born again and believe the gospel. The death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon the Lord, because we're all sinners. Uh, one of the chiefest, as Paul would say. It's very true. So are you. Call upon the Lord while he's near. 
And uh, again, to the young men especially, start dressing your age. To the older men, do you really have to hear this? Dress your age. You're 40. That's it, brethren. Be well. Take care. God bless to all the brethren in Christ. Bye-bye.